Hello and welcome everybody. Today we're going to be doing five tips that could help you play on higher difficulties in Deep Rock Galactic, whether that be Hazard 4, 5, or just kind of scaling up as you naturally level up. I've been asked this quite a lot of times as to uh, just specific tips to help you get better on Hazard 4 and 5 or to work your way up to Hazard 5 so that you can play it more normally, as well as Elite Deep Dives, but I would like to do that as its own separate video. So today we're just going to be talking about five helpful tips that can be applied to Elite Deep Dives too. Uh, but are mostly going to be useful for uh, just going up in difficulty level. And these will work on every class. The very first tip that I would like to talk about here is just suit upgrades and why it's important to upgrade your suit in the first place. Because if you're not aware, upgrading your suit to a certain point will get you extra health. And you can do this three times. Each extra health will give you five more health. Right here is uh, a breakdown of the suits. This is on carl.gg, which is a fantastic site. I would recommend you check it out if you would like to uh, go over any sort of potential builds, see what your stats are and everything like that. For right now, though, we're just going to be focusing on the actual uh, suit itself. This is on Driller, but it works the same with every class. And we'll talk about each of the options. So first things first, be sure to buy just everything that you can with your suit right away, that way you get the maximum amount of health. Extra health is just going to help you survive overall because 15 extra health is really nice and there's no reason not to have it. So let's go over each option that you have in each of the tiers. First up in tier one, I would say that this is completely your choice. Whichever one you like the most, pick that one. Shields regenerate sooner, so instead of taking the seven seconds, it takes six seconds. That's pretty nice. Shields coming back quicker is always gonna be useful. We have Shield Booster. This makes it so your shield regenerates faster, but it takes longer to initially start up the shield generation. This one can also be fine too. Uh, it's usually not a huge deal to have to wait an extra two seconds for your shield to come back. I don't really see much difference if you're not in combat with either of these. During combat, I would say the improved generator is a little bit better, but not by a massive amount. And then the last option in tier one is bigger mineral bag. This is just five more carry capacity with each material. So you go from 40 to 45. I usually pick this one, but again, your choice, pick whichever one of these you like the best. In tier two, we have two options. One is overcharger. You get five more shields. So you go from 25 shield to 30 shield. And our other option is maximum health, healthy. This gets you 20 more health. Usually I go with healthy here. The main reason being is that uh, once you're on those higher difficulties on hazard four and five, there's a good chance that the bugs are just going to rip right through your shield and hit your health anyway, or nearly knock out your shield with each hit. So just having a little bit more tankiness overall makes it so you might be able to survive an extra hit or two that you otherwise wouldn't be able to, and you just get more health out of it overall. However, if you find that you're not taking a whole bunch of health damage and just your shield's getting chipped a bit, which is going to happen on Has 4 and 5 regardless of how you play, the shield isn't a bad option here. And it's one that sometimes I pick, but usually I take the healthy. Like 95% of the time I will take healthy just so that I get that extra HP overall. And then if I have like Red Rock, I get even more HP on top of that. Just helps you survive those uh, tough situations when you get swarmed really quick. Then in tier three, we have our one and only option. Pick whatever this is for each class. Each of them are good. Um, they have their own little bonuses to them. In this case, Driller has uh, temperature resist to fire. So you become immune to floor fires, which is pretty nice. And fire just deals less damage to you. That's also pretty useful. NG is poison, which is also potentially useful, especially in like the fungus bog. NG, I would say, is probably the least useful just because you're not getting hit by poison too often. Gunner might have one of the best ones, just have an explosive resist where you potentially won't get one shot by exploders or by the detonator, assuming it blows up somewhat near you. And then scout has fall resist, which is super useful for scout because you're going to be falling quite a bit of scout. And then we have our tier four options where we have shockwave. Shockwave breaks your shield and deals damage to all enemies around you. This doesn't deal a whole ton of damage to the enemies around you, so I usually don't take it. It's kind of useful for killing swarmers or jellyfish that are nearby, but that's about it. It's not going to really kill grunts, at least not full health grunts. We have Static Discharge, which stuns enemies, which isn't entirely true. Um, that's not exactly what this does when your shield breaks. There's a chance that you will zap everything around you which will deal damage to it, but like the electricity. So if you're used to using something like Stubby that deals damage over time from the electricity, you'll deal a little bit of damage to everything around you. This one also just isn't that great either. You don't deal that much damage and it's not like it completely stuns enemies around you. It's also not entirely guaranteed. And then our last option is breathing room and breathing room is definitely the one that I'd recommend taking and the one that I think everybody probably should take if they have never tried it before. 
Breathing Room gives you an extra three seconds of invulnerability, so once you get rezzed, you have three seconds of grace time where you can't be injured by anything. Doubling this up to six seconds gets you a lot of time to potentially survive, which is very useful because this can help you with different perks. Um, if you have something like Resupplier and you go down next to a resupply pod, you can be picked up with Breathing Room, go right over to the resupply, grab it, and then leave the area and pretty much be back up to full health and be in a position to fight once again, as well as be a safe distance away. That is super, super useful. Uh, even in solo, Breathing Room is very useful because if Bosco picks you up, six seconds of invulnerability is a very long time for you to either run away or deal really high damage to the enemy. Also, during the duration of Breathing Room, you're immune to your own damage, so if you want to, say, throw grenades at your feet or whatever it might be to potentially kill something, you can do that to potentially kill it even faster. Second tip I would like to talk about is the perks and the perk choices that you have in Deep Rock Galactic. Now, for the most part, you can kind of pick whichever perks you would like to pick. Um, most of it is up to personal preference, and you do have three perk slots for passives and two for actives, assuming you've promoted your dwarfs enough to get all those um, slots and you've bought the uh, passive slots. The perks that I would recommend for Has5 kind of vary based on class. Dash is a very great perk that I'd recommend on everybody except for Scout. It's really not necessary on Scout. You get a lot of value out of it. It has a very low cooldown and you can use it. Just use it as a panic button um, if things start getting dicey. Other active perks that come to mind, Iron Will is a really great one because it lets you res yourself once. And if you combine this with something like Vampire, you can potentially pick yourself up, which is another great perk. I run it all the time on Driller, so that's an option. Filled Medic is amazing in multiplayer. Um, outside of that and just in solo, don't take it because it isn't going to do anything. But just being able to res people faster, not even with its instant res ability, is super useful on basically every mission. There's always going to be times where people are going to go down no matter how great they are at the game, you know, sometimes you're going to fall off of something or get blown up or whatever the case may be. Filled Medic is always going to be a good choice in multiplayer. A few other options might be heightened senses to where you don't get grabbed by leeches or grabbers, sand sharks, nemesis, anything like that can be pretty useful. It's a get out of jail free card, at least twice, so uh, use it wisely. <laughs> Berserker's really good for just dealing high amounts of damage per second. Uh, with your pickaxe, especially to certain targets that are weak to melee, which is almost every enemy in this game. It's also really good for just beating down dreadnoughts. You have things like Beastmaster, where you can get a Steve, which can kind of take some of the damage off of you, especially if you get a guard where he's pretty tanky and will usually be useful unless you have like an exploder infestation or something. Very useful on lethal enemies and on regenerative bugs because those affect Steve as well. For passives, I definitely recommend the perk Resupplier. If you haven't tried this one out, definitely give it a shot. It is very useful. You can just get resupplies back faster, which is very convenient, but it can also be super useful if there's a lot of stuff going on and you really need some ammo or you really need some health. It gets you back up to basically full health once you do grab it, even if you are missing almost all of your health. But try to experiment with this and keep in mind something like health perks are really, really useful, especially on the higher difficulties. Sweet Tooth, Resupplier, and Vampire, all great choices. Uh, for different occasions. Vampire is really good on Driller because it counts for your axes and your drills and it's really good if you want to combine it with Iron Will or you want to combine it with Berserker. Sweet Tooth just gets you more movement speed and more health overall so better uh, use of your Red Sugar and then Resupplier is just a nice quality of life perk. You could also go with another perk like Born Ready. Born Ready is really good on almost every class uh, with almost every build, unless you're playing like Cryo Driller or something where you really don't need it, or maybe Minigun Gunner, then you don't really need it. But it's fantastic on NG and can be fantastic on Gunner, just to constantly be reloading your weapons and switching back and forth between the two. And speaking of ammo, let's move on to tip number three, which is loadout management and just debating what loadout you want to take. Now, I'm not going to say that there's a particular great weapon for Has 4 or Has 5 on any particular class. Same with every class can do Has 4 and Has 5 without too much trouble, uh, at least once you get used to the difficulty and kind of used to what the class does. But I'm not going to say that there's really a right or wrong way to pick weapons or to necessarily build weapons. Pick whatever you enjoy the most and play whatever you enjoy the most. That's going to be your best bet. Anything that you're most familiar with, I think that you're going to do better with than if I was to say something that's incredibly strong or, you know, quote unquote meta in this game. Uh, pick what you like the most and play that. Of course, if you want like build guides and stuff, I do have full playlists of them. You can go check them out and see what I use. Um, but I encourage you to experiment, see what you like, see what works and what doesn't work and 
just use it from there. A general tip is try to make your build kind of well-rounded. This doesn't mean that each of your guns has to do every job well, but uh, you could have one gun, say your primary weapon that does extremely well against single target damage. You know, you can just shred through big enemies really fast with it. That's fantastic. Now you take a secondary that's really good at crowd control. Well, now you have your big targets and your crowds pretty much taken care of right there with your primary and secondary weapons. You could also pair this with something like one of your grenades that maybe gives you a status effect, maybe gives you some extra damage. Maybe it's also making up for one of the two weaknesses there. Same goes with potentially some of your other tools like your sentry guns or your drills, uh, whatever that might be. Try to make it kind of well-rounded and try to use up all of your gear equally. So that way you're kind of running out of ammo with everything at the same rate. That way you kind of know when it's best to call in a resupply because you can just judge off of whatever weapon you have. And of course, if you do run out of ammo, tip four will come in handy. Actually, it will help you before you run out of ammo, which tip four is use your pickaxe frequently. Use the power attack on the pickaxe pretty much whenever it's up. You can build the pickaxe however you'd like though. There's not necessarily one build that's better than the others with the pickaxe. Usually I go with just the power attack and then the better weight balance, which is faster cooldowns on your power attack. That's what I like, but if you want to go with more damage or you want to go with more AoE, both those can work really well too. Use your pickaxe power attack frequently because almost everything is weak to the pickaxe power attack anyway, so you can one-shot grunts on any difficulty as long as you hit them directly with this. And uh, it almost always stuns something if it doesn't just outright kill it. It also has very high armor breaking, so you can just knock the armor off of bigger enemies. If you consistently do this to just even regular grunts, you will save ammo in the long run, which will be very useful because your power attack, especially if you run like better weight balance and you have the Skull Crusher's Ale, I want to say, or no, Slayer Stout. Skull Crusher's is for melee damage, which is also really good for the pickaxe, but Slayer Stout with better weight balance knocks your cooldown to like five seconds or something. So every five seconds, you can just one shot a grunt. Use that all the time to make up space, to get some extra kills. And it's also really useful if you like running the perk Vampire because every time you kill just a regular old grunt with this, or let's say an acid spitter, or web spitter, or slash, or whatever it might be, you kill it, you get five health back, which can be great for just sustaining health overall throughout the mission. And then the fifth and final tip that I would like to give is movement and positioning. Movement and positioning is super important in this game, especially on the higher difficulties where bugs can swarm all around you. I would say positioning is more important than necessarily movement because you can constantly move in an area so long as you are pretty confident of the area or you kind of know like you fought in the area before. Always try to pick an area that's fairly open for you to fight in, especially if you're fighting normally grunts and stuff. This might change if you have like Mactera swarms and you want to fight in more of a condensed area because they have to more or less come to you and you can just kill them much easier that way, especially if you're playing like Driller. Um, get them inside of like a tunnel and just burn them all or freeze them all or whatever it might be. But most of the time you want a fairly open area that's mostly level. This can be helped again with Driller if you have your drills and you go and terraform the area. Make sure all the ground is kind of level for everybody to be fighting in. It's not entirely necessary though. You don't need like giant swaths of super flat land to be fighting the whole time. Just a relatively big open area where you guys can rotate, be attacking stuff, and be sure to be focusing down high level threats right away. These would be things like acid spitters, uh, web spitters, the slashers, exploders, stuff like that. Anything that's going to cause immediate trouble, try to get rid of those things first. And again, always be trying to fight in an open area and an area that you've already been in. It's better to be fighting in more of an enclosed area that you've already been in and you know that is safe so that you know where enemies can spawn from than necessarily just trying to push forward because the area might feel a little bit cramped. Because if you find a big open room, you don't know what's beyond there. You don't know how many enemies are there. You don't know if there's leeches or where things are going to be spawning. And then I guess for an extra bonus tip, I would say play to your class's strengths. This is pretty important. Uh, if you're Driller, you can potentially make the area more level, like I said, with the Terraform. If you're playing Engineer, be sure to put up your turrets if you know that enemies are going to be spawning anytime soon. If you're Gunner, be sure to put your shield down whenever you're trying to res somebody, at least if necessary, or if you are trying to defend or push an objective, something like Doretta or maybe the uplink or whatever it might be. And then if you're Scout, be sure to use your mobility to your advantage as well as your flares. Be sure that everybody can have some level of visibility or at least you have some level of visibility 
and use your grappling hook very frequently so that you can outmaneuver bugs and just keep kind of kiting them around as you just keep picking them off. So these were five-ish tips that hopefully helped you guys get a little bit better at doing has four and has five missions. Uh, of course, you can apply this to any uh, level of difficulty and don't feel pressured to go up in difficulty if you don't feel comfortable doing that or if you feel like it's you know super necessary to be playing on has five. Well, a little while ago, we did a poll on this to see what everybody's favorite hazard difficulties to play on were, and usually it was has four, has three, and has five, with uh, I think some also picking has two, and then basically nobody picking has one, which is kind of understandable, has one doesn't really have much. Even if you are just playing on has one, don't let that detract from your fun or anything like that. Play the game how you want to play it. I mean, you bought the game, you can play it however the heck you want. Don't let anybody tell you that you have to play it a different way. The only thing in this game that's truly limiting you in terms of what difficulty you have to play on is actually going on the deep dives with the deep dive and elite deep dive. But aside from that, play on whatever difficulty you'd like. This game is super fun and thanks everybody for watching this. I really do appreciate it. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I will talk to you next time. Bye-bye.